<laughs> not even, no, I already turned the key. Oh. <laughs> it's not even coming close to turn it over. Growing up in Ventura, California, the Malloys were pretty much the hometown heroes. And Dan, being the youngest of the three brothers, I sort of watched closely as he went through his competitive years and went from winning major competitions to completely giving up competing and dropping his major sponsors in order to spend more time at home working with a local company, Patagonia, local board builders, and just kind of different ideas in terms of building surfboards and what it means to be a pro surfer. This is a new car for you? Yeah, me and my brother Keith um, have been experimenting kind of for the last couple of years with just trying to use a little bit less gas and stuff. And um, so we got this little thing. I think it's an 82 VW Rabbit truck and it gets 40 miles to the gallon of um, diesel or we put biodiesel in it. I think this battery pack's died. <laughs> Round two. Nice. Dan super mellow. Um, just absolutely rips, you know, charges. Freaking. The best, you know, you're just like, he's one of the most incredible athletes I've ever seen. One of the best tube riders in the world by far. He's, he's a nice guy. I think that's probably the most inspirational thing about Dan is he's like still a cool guy and he's been there and done that for so fucking long that you think he'd be a total asshole, but he's pretty far from it. So this whole area is where I grew up and learned how to surf and where my family and all my friends are from. This is um, where they glass the Patagonia surfboards and this is the retail store right here. So it's really cool to be working with them because it's a part of our community rather than working for one of the surf companies down in San Diego or Newport Beach, which I don't really have very much interest in the, the scenes down there and the uh, communities down there. And so it's really, really fun to be a part of something right at home. We were really clueless to the whole surf scene, you know, when we were little kids. And we, we thought that this spot right up here called Emma Wood, we thought it was the best surf break in the world. We'd just come straight out of Ojai, turn right on the freeway, and um, go right down here. Emma Wood. It's a really neat spot. Um, there's a little uh, wedgie left and a little right. There's a little left right there. A bunch of the kids surf here too, so it's fun to paddle out and check out all the groms and see who's ripping and just like a ton of good memories along this whole part of the coast. So I think it's called Rincon Parkway or something, but we always just called it Summer Beach because it's one of the beaches that we would go to in the summertime and there's another place that we thought was really good wave and <laughs> you know it's fun but it's not a really good wave <laughs> so so this is um my brother keith's house and i live here too or in a room from him and um we have a ton of surfboards <laughs> in here it's kind of a collection over the last like i don't know our whole lives <laughs> dan's funny because like you can ride any kind of surfboard. You put Dan Malloy on a piece of wood with a door handle on it, and he'll probably still surf better than you. He was like one of the first pro guys to like really be open to trying something besides their 6'2", 6'3", thruster. Dan was definitely riding some different boards, some of those wooden ones and the quads and stuff, and um, it looked like they were going insane for him, you know? He'd just come flying out of these pits, just straight into like the biggest carve, and then it's encouraging, but it's also like belittling, you know, he's, he's fucking that good. Just surfs so well and so insane, and it's just cool to have people like that, you know, um, out there surfing and pushing the limits and riding different boards. And He's a good enough surfer to feel like what those boards have to offer, and his mind was open enough where to put them to get that feeling. For one of the first guys that's showing up in the videos on that equipment and ripping them in good waves, and then both doors just went you know, and everyone came rushing into it. What's your dad's surfing history? He grew up in Los Angeles. When they were like 10 years old, he moved to uh, Topanga. He wanted to learn how to surf, and one year he asked his parents for a surfboard for Christmas. 
and you didn't get it. So I think he like ripped an old longboard apart and uh, made this. He kind of grew up with like a rough crowd of surfers. Yeah, he was actually the youngest of a crew of guys that they were called the Topanga Bombers. And um, they're just kind of, you know, at that time surfing was rebel guys and yeah. at his high school, the Beach Boys played. He said him and his friends, the Topanga Bombers, all came with eggs and egged the Beach Boys off the stage and they left and didn't come back. And it was like right at the beginning of the dance. <laughs> This is, uh, this, is, this is that Rich Pavel that, from Sprout, like the finless one. Mm -hmm. And that board is really, really good. So you brought that board to Sri Lanka? Yeah, I took that one to Sri Lanka and surfed it a ton. That one was shaped for Kelly. And I will still have to give it back. He totally knows that I have it still. <laughs> I, I, to I need to give it back. But there's like a big ethical dispute in surfing whether you should use jet skis or not to get into waves. And... Um, I kind of agree with all the anti-jet ski talk, but then every once in a while you can get in a situation that would be impossible to get in. Part of it's just like it's loud and smells like gas, and when you get a good wave, it's not as, as uh, you don't feel like the accomplishment doesn't, I don't know, it just is like, it's a different, it's almost just a different experience, and on a big days, you'll catch maybe 30 or 40 waves on it with a jet ski, and if you're paddling, you might only catch three or four, but... It's like that whole quantity and quality thing. It's like those four waves and that whole experience are super, you know, quiet and nice and with a couple of friends and you don't feel as safe, but that can kind of feel okay too, you know, so. This is kind of the latest version of uh, Danny Hess uh, and I've been working on some boards or he's been working on them and I've been getting to ride them, <laughs> I guess is how it should be put. Actually, what I've been riding the most around here in the summertime uh, as far as like shortboards go, or these Fletch is also my neighbor. He lives about four houses up. He's been shaping me boards for about three years now, and um, this is kind of like a model we've been working on a ton, and it's coming out pretty good. It's this board, like the best shortboard that I have right now. You know, but my dad's made about ten or twelve of these. Um, they're like uh, replicas of the boards that they used to make and ride in the twenties or around that era. I guess it was like from the early 1900s to maybe the 30s they were still around, kind of guessing. And um, they're a replica of the Tom Blake style paddle board, paddle surfboards. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And it fills up with water pretty quick. Oh, I don't know if there's a cork, but I think a wine cork fits in there, so. Let's see. This is Tom Blake. Tom Blake was just this crazy innovator. One of the people who set the standard for the surfing lifestyle. He's like this kind of crazy eccentric guy who, I think vegan, vegetarian, in Hawaii at a time when like, you know, they were having luau's and eating oh, yeah. pig and barbecue and all this stuff. Kind of lived in a little tiny boat by himself and was one of the first people to go, you know, let's make the boards really, really light and through a bunch of different experiments came up with these hollow wooden boards and all of a sudden there were these amazing tools for lifeguarding and surfing, everything was better and then one day he put a fin on the back to see if it would help him steer a little bit better and you know, I mean that was probably the most important innovation. All of a sudden you could completely control the board and go down the line which was like the totally setting everyone up to get barreled. riding um i think it's a 7-2 greg little uh, about a week ago or something like that i was kind of just not that much in the mood to surf and i um those boards paddle well and are like easy to carry so i just grabbed it it didn't have a fin in it but i was just going to go on my stomach or maybe go on my knees or something and just i just wanted to get in the water and i got a couple waves and stood up and it felt like it was really going fast even though it didn't have a fin the way that it's shaped you could really still go down the line so I got all psyched and <laughs> it's kind of the board I've been riding in the last few days or I've had about four sessions now without a fin and kind of totally having fun with it. You got to concentrate super hard 
and like totally focus, you know, and little older waves like that, you don't usually have to pay that much attention. So like on days like today, it's kind of soft and you can experiment with different stuff. And usually that's what makes it fun. If you go out on a board you're super used to, you kind of can be a little bit boring, <laughs> it depends. <laughs>